All right, we're going to tie a tube fly today uh, called the Prairie Dog. It's it's a fly I came up with uh, kind of based on a lot of traditional Atlantic patterns from the UK or from Europe, actually. Uh, I'm going to start with regular plastic tubing. This is the, the three millimeter stuff. I'm just going to trim up the end so it's nice and square. And like a lot of tube flies that are made on plastic, I'm going to just take a flame to the back end to make that ridge. You can see how it's kind of rolled back on itself. Okay. At this point, you're going to choose the length, how long you want this pattern. Um, we have a lot of friends and customers that like to use this for Atlantic salmon. That's why it's we're tying on plastic today. There's so many regulations on a lot of Atlantic rivers about uh, plastic-only tubes. So we're going to choose, I'm going to go about an, about an inch with the plastic. And just to make this fly have a smaller head, we're not going to add a bead to it either, or a cone. Uh, again, against reg regulations in a lot of streams. We're going to insert small Scandinavian plastic into the, the large stuff. Uh, and we're just going to do that so it ends up with a smaller head, like I said. Okay, so we're just going to put an angle, kind of an angle cut on here. And like we've shown many times, I'm just going to squeeze it in. And uh, a friend of ours from Europe actually uh, gave us a good pointer about just giving a little extra level of security. Uh, you can see it's it's inserted in that plastic now, uh, almost a quarter of an inch. We'll uh, cut so there's maybe almost half an inch coming out the front. We'll get it onto our tapered pin, and here's the trick that our uh, European friend showed us. Let's get this straight in the vise. So it's not all crooked for you. There you go. I'm just going to zoom into this part. And this, this trick he had is just putting a little extra compression on the front. Um, so now this, this thicker plastic tubing it takes quite a bit of force to compress down on it so if my thread breaks here don't be alarmed just putting a little extra force just to really secure that skinnier tube in the in the, uh, the thicker tube okay, so I'll just zoom in again just so you can see that okay, as you can see it's slightly compressed now just slightly really hanging on to that tube all right, let's start this fly. We call this one the prairie dog, or I call this one the prairie dog. Um, originally, when I first tied it, I used buffalo hair or uh, North American bison. Uh, the only problem with that is to find the right fur from from a bison is pretty tough. It's so crinkly usually. Uh, to find the really straight stuff is, is is pretty tough. We gave up on that idea, but the original one did have that, so that's where the name came from. All right, we'll work our thread all the way, almost to the back. We'll leave about an eighth of an inch as we normally do. Okay. And we'll start with a little, kind of a little, almost like a, well, so many steelhead patterns that have a, a kind of a green tag at the back. Um, we're going to start with seals for just a little ball of it at the back. And we're not going to put any ribbing over it or anything like that. We just like to make the ball of it a pretty loose ball. And what happens is after you use a little while, it almost the ball almost becomes a tail because it kind of unravels a little bit so for that reason we don't cover it with for, with ribbing or, or anything like that or we don't put it into a doubling loop it actually kind of looks better when it, and it starts to pick out a bit so a pretty loose thread of seal fur dubbing we're going to wrap we're going to wrap it really close together so it so it just looks like a ball of fur right, and that's all it takes Okay, that's, we'll leave it kind of picked out like that and the more you fish it the more picked out it becomes and it almost it starts to kind of flow back almost like a little tail on it. Okay, we're going to move our thread, or actually sorry, now we're going to get a rib. We're going to use a oval, oval gold tinsel, quite thin. This is going to be our rib of the fly because the main body of the fly is, is going to be a tinsel fly. Okay, so we'll just attach that and then we're going to move our thread all the way up. 
almost all the way up. And we'll just let our thread hang. At this point we're going to add, uh, the original version of this used to use just flat silver tinsel, but we've kind of upped it a little bit with using diamond braid. Uh, it's got a few other names out there too. It's just a tinsel product. I'm going to tie it in from the front, and then go down the body, and then back up. We just find it's a little, little bit more durable. A little flash here too. I mean, it is named Diamond Raid, right? And we like to do a double layer of this just because it, th it thickens the body of the tube up a little bit, which is something we wanted. And uh, don't tell the fish fish regulation guys, but it adds weight to the plastic tube. Not a lot, but a little bit. That was just absolutely by fluke that I had just enough to finish that. Must be because I've tied a few thousand of them. Alright. I'm going to come back with our rib now. So we'll just counterwind this. Reverse wrap it, whatever you want to call it. Just to make sure it's secure. And we'll tie it off. Okay, so there's the body of the fly. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna work on the wing now, and the wing is is a style that's been, like I said, big in Europe for many, many, many decades. Uh, it's called an, an in the round style, and in the round just means that the fur is gonna go all the way around the f the fly. Uh, it's not gonna be a traditional temple dog or a temple dog wing, or or kind of looking like a streamer where it's just one wing on top. The wing is actually gonna go all the way. Okay, and the wing's done in in. Uh, I wouldn't say layers, but it's more actually like clumps. We're going to start with a little bit of orange bucktail. And the reason we use bucktail is because it just adds a little bit of structure to the last wing we're going to put on top, which is going to be a lighter fur. So we're picking out a few strands of bucktail, and we want it to go quite a bit past the tail. Oops. And at this point, I want to add it just, just to where the ridge of the of the little tube meets the big tube because I'm going to remember I'm going to finish my head on the little tube okay. and I'm just going to turn this now and add a little bit more orange and I usually go in in clumps of three so there's two and I'll just come back this way and do it do the one towards me third clump. It's important to kind of measure them against each other. It looks kind of ridiculous if you have if you have uh, <laughs> clumps with different lengths. Okay, so there's the first wing and you can see it's, it's tied in three clumps. Now in between each one of those three clumps we're going to add the next color of bucktail which is now, too, I'm uh, add yellow. The yellow in between the clumps of orange but I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to move down to the small tube now. If you don't do that, what will happen is if you'll be working on the big tube and you'll make a wrap and all of a sudden it'll slide down anyway and, and unravel things. So I'm going to move down to the small tube. And the yellow is going to be a little bit more sparse. I find the yellow a really powerful color when it's next to the orange. You don't need very much at all. And we'll try and get it in between those clumps of orange. And you'll notice because it's on the small tube it's going to stick out a little bit more. The big, the lip of the big tube props it up a little bit. So right now it looks a little bit ridiculous because the yellow is really sticking out. That'll all be fixed when we add the black here. Now you'll notice there seems to be a gap of black thread you can see in between. When this last wing is on, that'll all be covered up. Right. At this point I just take, like to take a look at the tail, 
or the, the back end to see if there's any really ridiculously sticking out pieces of bucktail. This is a good time to pull them out. You can see most of them are pretty even, even when the orange comes down. Alright, the last wing we add is a finished snow raccoon. And uh, like I said, we used to use buffalo for this, but you just can't get the straight fibers of buffalo anymore. They're very, very tough to find. Not that buffalo are tough to find, but just to find, find hair that's really going to work for nice for a fly. It's not going to be uh, just a hairy mess. So the best thing about finished snow raccoon, I've got feathers all through this piece, is, well, you probably can't see it. In fact, I'm sure you can't. But it's got really fine guard hairs and then a nice fluffy base. It's really beautiful stuff. And we like to tie with the guard hairs absolutely left in. So I'll get a clump of it. And you can see, hopefully, see the shiny guard hairs that are there? And then the ender fur, we tie with the whole thing. We find that the ender fur kind of bulks it up a little bit. And then the guard hairs kind of taper out really nice over the back of the pattern. Okay, so just like we did with the orange and the yellow, we're going to tie this in. It might only be two clumps because this stuff is so fluffy. And all you need to do is kind of comb it and spread it out a little bit. So I'm just using my finger to spread it out. Right. We go on the other side. And you know what, this, this fly I think I will do three clumps. And you'll see when, when you tie a few patterns in the round like this, you'll really get a feel for how much how much hair you're going to need and how bulky or 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 uh, how much material basically you're going to need for the pattern. Okay, so I'll just pull it, make sure there's no loose fibers. Okay, and I've got one more to go here. My last clump. Whoops, that clump, clump kind of fell apart. It's getting a little fluffy here. I'm just going to wet this down. You probably noticed me doing that a lot <laughs> in these videos. Just drives me crazy when when fibers are kind of loose like that. You don't get a good feel for what the actual pattern is going to look like. Okay. You'll notice I've got a gap here, so <laughs> put a tiny fourth clump in. And that's what I mean, you're going to get a feel for for what you need to make an in-the-round fly kind of sit the way you want it to. I just noticed that's totally off screen. Trying to find that bare spot now. You can see a rotary vise is really nice during times like this. I'm going to get it back on screen now. And... start making the head. You, know, you can see how I've still got a pretty big head. You can only imagine how big the head would be if I stuck to the just the three millimeter really, really fat plastic tubing. Putting the small tubing on just gives you that uh, little extra skinniness on the head. Alright. Now I don't always do this but just because this is a video, I'll throw on some jungle cock as well. Really spice up the look of the fly. Now a lot, a lot of purists, of course, would say with a with a fly tied in the round, having jungle cock on, doesn't really make sense because the fly can be fished any any way. There's no real upright position to it, but we'll break a rule. Okay. 
Right, so you can see how that bucktail kind of props up, props up the finished snow raccoon. It gives it a nice look. Right, we'll just wrap this up. We'll make sure the head's nice and secure. I've also learned something else with tying for these videos. I, I mean, I don't know what you do with your flies, but when I tie flies, I tie quite a few at a time. And I always wait till the end of the day or end of the night to glue them all. I don't glue them as I go. And since I like to finish off the flies by showing you how to melt the melt the edges, I'm not going to glue this one. I'll uh, I'll use some head varnish at the end of the day today. Okay. So at this point, just like we finish any plastic tube, we'll pull it off the tapered needle, okay. and we'll cut to one eighth of an inch and my candles aren't working so hot today my alcohol lamp so I've got this lovely butane torch a little over the top but it's important you go easy at this step I've ruined a few flies by going too fast and having it curl back too fast or having it curl back right into the thread and I'm pretty happy with that. Alright, so I'll just get that back for one final look. And you can see the yellow and orange underneath the black really gives it a nice look. Uh, and then peeking underneath is the, the ball of yellow. Really effective fly out east, from what I've told. I haven't used it myself out east. I've used it for cutthroat and salmon, and it works well. Uh, but that's a that's a fly that's tied in the round. That's it.